Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to answer another commonly asked question that I get, uh, and that is, hey, I just bought a piece of teak from the Battleship store. Is it from World War II? So uh, today I'm going to tell you how I can tell if it's from World War II. Uh, I do not know if your teak is from World War II or not. Uh, we've been ripping up a lot of teak from many different parts of the ship, and uh, quite honestly, I'm not sure where the piece you got was pulled up from. Uh, but I'm going to try and give you some of the evidence I have uh, so that maybe you can uh, figure it out on your own. So, uh, first off, as built, Battleship New Jersey had a full teak deck. The boards are two inches thick, four inches wide, uh, and you know, anywhere from 8 to 10 or 12 feet long in most cases. There are turn boards along the edge of the ship and around uh, other deck features that tend to be a little bit wider than that. But by and large, the bulk of the 43,000 square feet of teak wood deck on this ship uh, falls into that 4 inch thick category. Teak uh, can usually last for about 20 years which is the designed lifespan of a battleship. Battleship New Jersey, to my knowledge, never got a new full teak deck. However, we've got a tremendous amount of evidence that they spot replaced boards here and there. As far as I know, Wisconsin is the only battleship to get a replacement teak deck. This would have been in 1988. All the other Iowas had the same basic teak wood deck uh, from when they were built to the end of their service, with exceptions that, that were repaired along the way. So we have a mixture of teak wood that was on the ship in World War II and likely remained just about the same through the 1950s. Uh, we know that they replaced a fair amount during Vietnam. At that point, there were still a lot of uh, World War II era ships in service that had teak decks. Uh, and so they replaced it in a very similar manner to the World War II stuff. I'm, I'm not particularly good at uh, telling what's Vietnam versus uh, what's World War II teak, because they're using a lot of the same uh, materials and techniques. Uh, however, I have seen a picture of the ship sailing off Vietnam uh, where it's pretty clear what's new stuff and what's old stuff based on the color of it. In the 1980s, uh, there are a couple of ways we know if it's new teak because they used a couple of different methods. The first method it seems like they used uh, was trying to replace teak in a like manner. Uh, so we are amidships just aft of the captain's office on the starboard side uh, and forward of the starboard side boat booms under the old uh, 20 millimeter gun position that was on the 01 level. And in this section, they added in the 1980s a base for a tripod that would be part of underway refueling, underway supply and replenishment. You can see on the uh, bulkhead behind me, they also added these uh, white tie-down points for some of the rigging that's associated with that. And you can see behind me the uh, fire main and the uh, empty spot back by this trash can here where there used to be a steam pipe has uh, some of the wood ripped up. So these are all features that seem to be added for uh, refueling. Oh, and there's the uh, refueling point right there. Uh, so this is all added in the 1980s uh, when the refueling and resupply arrangements are changed on the ship with the addition of the uh, refueling king post back aft. So this is added. And if you look at the wood around it, you can tell that this piece of wood right here looks very different from these pieces right here, these four that are around this uh, feature that was added. So clearly, uh, we've got some original wood here that's in good shape, that's good smooth teak, uh, but you can see it's kind of old. Most of the plugs have popped up. It's, it's been there a while. And then uh, this stuff is much less smooth. You, you can really see the grain pattern here. And uh, so it's, it's a different wood. So they had to rip up these four boards so they could weld this down and then they had to install new wood. 
Uh, so we have ripped up this exact same spot on the other side of the ship, and we'll go over there and look at what's under it in a minute. But when we ripped it up, I looked at a board sitting there, and I thought, that must be Douglas fir. Now, we know that they uh, replaced a lot of the deck with other materials besides teak. Uh, but then when I picked it up, it was heavy like teak. Uh, and yet, and, and when you look at the cut cross section, it looks like the grain pattern of teak. So like, if this is teak, why is it so much rougher than this stuff? What I think is going on here is this older World War II teak is really old growth. So it's got a really narrow grain uh, that's really smooth, but this new growth teak is not as old, and so it's got a much wider grain pattern and it's, it's less smooth, uh, which means it's not as oily, it doesn't last as long as the old stuff. Now, when you buy a piece of teak, odds are you're, you're just getting one random section uh, and, and you probably haven't spent as much time laying on the battleship's deck as I have, uh, so you can't necessarily just look at it and be like, ah, old grain or new grain, whatever the case is. So uh, another way you can tell, the older teak has plug holes in it that are about an inch and a quarter because they had studs that were just over an inch wide. By the 1980s, the studs are closer to an inch and a half. And so the plug holes on these newer boards are a quarter inch bigger. So uh, what are these plug holes at all? When you're laying the teak down, you're sitting it here, you got a hole drilled in it, and there's a threaded stud that's welded to the deck that sticks up through that hole. And then there's a round piece that threads onto that, much like a uh, nut threads onto a bolt. And it uh, has a threaded inside and it has a kind of flat top that's round that is then going to hold down this board. Now, you don't want that sticking up out of the board and causing a tripping hazard, so it is countersunk in, and you tend to sink it about a half inch deep, uh, and then you'll take a half inch wooden plug and put it right on that hole. And uh, you, you can really tell the old World War II stuff because the uh, grain of the plug is always in line with the grain of the board. Like somebody sits there and matches it up just because that's what craftsmen did back then. Uh, and then later stuff you see, it's just like stuck in whatever they used. So uh, now we are at the Battleship New Jersey Botanical Gardens. Uh, this section of deck was completely replaced when they added the new boat handling arrangements amidships. They added new davits. Here, they added this wave guard, which differs between the Iowa class battleships. You see a nice curved one like this. Uh, it's New Jersey or Missouri. It's not the, or the, the Pascagoula modified ship. Now, the wood that they replaced here under the boats is not teak. Uh, you can very clearly see relatively intact wood coming in here and then just this darker, uh, more profiled wood that's all rotten and has the grass growing in it, if that's a good indicator for you. Uh, that is a softer wood. That is not teak. That's like a Douglas fir. Uh, and I imagine they didn't have much teak on hand or they were trying to save money. Uh, Lehman was very much trying to come in under budget with this project. And uh, he, he had a, a very set budget. So they seem to have replaced this big area, not with pieces of teak like we saw around those, those smaller fittings, but with this fur. And it's, it's very easy to tell because it is significantly rotten and uh, comes up in, in pieces like mulch. You uh, definitely bought a piece of teak. We are not giving any of the fur away because when we rip it up, it disintegrates. There's nothing to sell you. So your, your piece is definitely teak. It's not one of these pieces of fur from the uh, 1980s.
So now we're, we're further towards the bow at an area where, the, uh, where they added a 50 caliber tripod in the 80s. So you can see the deck around this, especially on the edge, is fur. The stuff past it is not as deteriorated, that is teak. Uh, this is also a good place to show off that the turn boards on the edge are wider. This one's eight inches wide as opposed to the four inch wide uh, teak boards here. Many of these turn boards along the edge of the ship were replaced with straight fur. Uh, it does not seem like they replaced any teak wider than four inches in the 80s. Now, this wood here on the bow of the ship was largely replaced in the 80s, and it was in yet another method. Uh, so let's come up to this piece right here because you can see it really well. So it's got an inch and a half plug in it. We know it's a uh, 1980s board. The top layer appears to be in very good shape. And yet, uh, if I break this piece off, it's only about a half inch thick. And under it is mulch. Like, what? happen there? Why is the top in good shape and the bottom not? Well, another way to save money when they had to do this large area at the bow, they laminated their teak together. So the top half inch is actual teak, the bottom inch and a half is fur, and they're just glued together. So the teak uh, is in good shape, but the fur under it is completely rotten. Uh, you're not going to get any laminated pieces of teak either because those are not in good shape. So let's go see what the deck looks like under this stuff. So we were just on the starboard side. Now we're over on the port side of the ship, uh, similar location. This is where we've been ripping up the wood recently. And here we've got really great visual indicators of where there was 80s wood versus earlier wood. So um, notice where I am standing. You've got smooth green metal and you've still got uh, primer showing on it. And then right next to that, you've got a much rougher raised uh, rust bloom. That scale right there that's gotta be chipped off to get back to bare, bare metal. So when they ripped up the wood around this section for whatever feature they added in the 80s, maybe this uh, steam pipe, they chipped it down to bare metal, and they put this green zinc primer down on it. Uh, and because that's not too far in the past, 40 years ago, um, the primer is still largely intact, and we're not seeing significant rust under it. Look, here you can see some orange, that's flash rust from where we've uh, pulled up the wood and the primer came up with it. And uh, so now it is just starting to, to rust. So it'll still take decades for this flash rust on the bare metal to turn into this scale from where the earlier wood is. Another thing to see here is notice on top of this is black substance. In the 80s, when they put the teak down, first they laid a rubber roofing compound and then they bedded the teak in that. So the same sort of stuff that there are in the seams of the teak. So um, if you get your board and you turn it over and it's got uh, green on it, that's the zinc primer, it's from the 80s. If it's got like a, a rubber on it, that is the 80s uh, roofing compound that they bedded this in. So that is probably uh, good indicators that's from the 1980s. During World War II, they bedded it in more of a cosmoline type oil. And the reason they did that, the, the deck isn't smooth. It tends to ripple depending on if there's a frame under it or not. The wood is flat, so that means that there are pockets under it. And if water gets under that, it's not gonna be able to evaporate. It's just gonna sit there and that's gonna rust the steel under the wood. Uh, so that's bad. Oil is hydrophobic. That cavity is filled with oil, water can't get under there, and oil is good for steel, it doesn't corrode it. So uh, sometimes the 80s wood comes up 
with the uh, that preservative grease still on it. Other times it comes up with uh, some of the rust still on it. So if you get like a a uh, oily more liquid layer, it's not solid like the roofing rubber rubber. Uh, or if there is significant rust on the underside of your wood, uh, or, you know, we, we don't ship this stuff completely raw. Um, if the underside of your wood isn't relatively smooth and finished, then that is probably stuff that has had rust building up under it over time. Uh, so that is not 80s wood. Now, not 80s wood doesn't necessarily mean World War II. Uh, like I said, they definitely did changes uh, in the 1950s when they removed some of the gun positions, and they had to replace a fair amount in the 1960s. But um, hopefully this video has given you enough of the uh, information you need to date your wood, because once you've got it, I can't really tell you what you've got. So if after 15 minutes of listening to me talk about being able to buy Battleship New Jersey's teak wood, as you intrigued, you don't have a piece yet, check out uh, the link in the description below to our gift shop where you can buy lengths of teak in various segments. Uh, and uh, remember, it, it's like buying Pokemon cards. You have to buy a bunch of packs before you get a holographic. So you might have to buy a couple of pieces to guarantee that you'll get a piece from World War II. Plus, unlike Pokemon cards, buying the teak wood supports the battleship. All of the money we make off of selling the wood that's ripped up from the deck goes right back into putting new wood down on the deck. Most museum ships sell their teak wood as they're replacing it. So do you have any from New Jersey or another vessel? Let us know in the comment section down below. Also, let us know if you have any cool souvenirs from their gift shops, particularly uh, pieces that were removed from the ship for various reasons. I'd love to hear about them. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of viewers like yourselves and businesses. We really appreciate your support. You can support us either by buying stuff from our gift shop or just by donating at the link in the description below. And it all goes back into the restoration of the ship. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel and our museum. Thanks for watching.